one of the benefits that you get with cover crops, some cover crops anyway, is the pollinator habitat. Good afternoon, it's Ross Wilson, Certified Crop Advisor with the Assalville Bayfield Conservation Authority. Today we're out here in a, uh, a beautiful cover crop, nice uniform of uh, oats and peas. I want to talk a little bit about pollinators. When we tend to poll think about pollinators, we think about kind of the common honey bee, but it's only one of many. There's over 400 some species of bees uh, that are present in Ontario that will do the work of pollinating. Some of them range from just our common honeybee right through to bumblebees, sweat bees, you name it. So there's 400 and some in total. Not that the bees are the only pollinators, there's a range of pollinators outside of that. Flies, moths, butterflies, beetles, and in some cases uh, uh, bats and uh, other creatures, birds, can actually do pollinating as well. But they, we, we want to just focus on, on when, if we're planting cover crops, how do we support and choose cover crop, how do we grow it so that it supports the pollinators in our area. One of the things that's important is the actual selection of the cover crop. So for example, uh, not all cover crops would support a uh, pollinator habitat. So something like the, these oats, uh, they don't actually support uh, pollinators. Other species that do, lots of the clovers do, and they make great, uh, great honey as we all know. Uh, here's, a, here's a buckwheat. Any of you that have buckwheat uh, knows that that's a, 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 great, uh, a great honey as well. We've had canola here, wild canola I think, uh, and uh, when I sampled that the bees were out flying around it as I speak. Nice warm day this afternoon, the bees were out uh, later on today when it was nice and warm but this morning the flies were out. Uh, each pollinator has its own little niche and they don't all eat the same things, they can't all access the same things, so a broad diversity of pollinators is a great thing. Uh, one of the things also that you're considering if you want to grow a cover crop to support pollinators, you have to understand that all of these creatures don't have access to all of the cover crops. So for example, they don't all, can't all fly the same distance. So if you look at the common honeybee, he might go five to eight kilometers uh, for, in terms of foraging. Uh, Bumblebee might only get a kilometer and a half to two kilometers, and the sweat bee is only maybe two or three hundred meters. So if you want to support those pollinators, you have to make sure that your cover crop is, is produced in, in, a, in a right area. So for example, you look out behind me and you look across the field and we've got uh, 200 acre fields here side by side. And what you can see is there's really essentially no pollinator habitat out there whatsoever until you turn around and right behind me is, is, a, is a bush. So during the day, you would get permanent uh, uh, nesting areas in those and the pollinators would come out of there, out into the field to forage for, for the nectar and then return uh, to their nest to store the sugars. So there's a little overview. So if you want to uh, Get a little more information, visit abca.ca. We've got a cover crop page. There's a link on there so you can actually help choose a cover crop for your particular uh, purpose. And if pollinators is one of them, there's a link there that you can follow it along and you get some more direction. Not all cover crop species uh, will provide pollinator habitat, but if that's one of your goals, you can certainly do the research and find out which of those species do a better job of supporting pollinators. We've got some milkweed. Common pollinator of the milkweed is the uh, the monarch butterfly. It's now September the 23rd, and all the butterflies would have monarchs would have left uh, Ontario on their way uh, across Lake Erie down to Mexico.